There always seems to be some crazy Tesla rumor floating around online. They're gonna add some big new feature to all their cars. They're gonna finally redesign the interior of the Tesla Model S, or maybe, just maybe, they're gonna add an app store to Tesla vehicles, giving developers access to that platform to develop and make apps, and consumers and drivers of vehicles the access to purchase and download apps and have access to this brand new third-party app ecosystem. And there is no denying that apps have totally transformed uh, computers and smartphones and even cars with uh, Android Auto and CarPlay. But what about Tesla vehicles? This has been a rumor forever now that Tesla is going to add an app store to their cars and we're gonna get all this amazing new access, but why hasn't it happened? Uh, what would be the benefits, what would be the risks, and is Tesla ever actually going to add an app store to their vehicles? Let's talk about why this is such a big deal and why this is something that many people have long been waiting for. So to give a little context and a little perspective to this video, I recently made a video talking all about how, why uh, I thought that Tesla's software in their vehicles was superior to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And I'll link to that video up here. Uh, but as a brief summary, I have owned cars that have had both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and those systems definitely have their strengths, but they also have their weaknesses. And I believe in Tesla and their future and their engineering staff and how just incredible the software that makes up these vehicles really is and the power uh, and the opportunity in the future that software has to get better and we see it get better over time over and over again and I still think the Tesla software is better than what you'd get with CarPlay and what you'd get with Android Auto in most respects but I do think that there are obviously some missing features. People want third-party apps. People want the ability to swap the default music player or maybe a different mapping system. And I think that the App Store could be kind of the solution to many problems and in a sense really take the pressure uh, and the workload off of Tesla engineers and kind of give that opportunity to third-party developers to come in and to solve that problem and kind of make it a win-win for everybody involved. And like I said, there are things that many people would love to see in third-party apps. And just to kind of glance over a few of the big ones here, obviously many people love the Tesla mapping system, but they prefer Waze. They just kind of like the creature comforts and some of the features of Waze. People would love the ability to swap that map out entirely with something different. Also, Spotify was a great first step uh, as a real third-party music uh, player officially supported in the car, but what about Apple Music? What about Google Play Music or YouTube Music or whatever it's called these days? Uh, Tidal, uh, other uh, third-party music streaming services to have that ability to also use that as the default in the car as well as not having to pay for a Spotify premium subscription just a, a regular old Spotify account or Pandora that would be super cool to see that in the vehicle as well third-party streaming options we've seen the rise of these kind of web-based alternatives to give you access to Plex and Disney Plus but to see those official apps make their way to the vehicle would be super cool and uh, one for me that kind of strikes a little closer to my heart uh, a better podcast app. The default podcast app in the Tesla is not good. Give developers uh, like oh, the Overcast devs access to uh, the Tesla ecosystem or Pocket Cast or something else. Uh, just having more access to different options is never a bad thing and could really strengthen the Tesla uh, car ecosystem and more importantly the Tesla software experience. And if you think about this kind of from a positive perspective for a second, there are a lot of win-win uh, scenarios here. Uh, it's a win for Tesla, it's a win for developers, and a win for drivers and uh, people who own Teslas. So certainly for the driver, you have access now to apps that you wouldn't otherwise have access to, stuff that Tesla just hasn't done. Like I said, a third-party music player, you get maybe more games, you get some more video service options, lots of apps that are both free and paid. Obviously, you have developers who have access now to a whole uh, brand new New ecosystem uh, with hundreds of thousands if not millions of people who own Teslas around the world you have access to a whole new user base and also not only a cool new way to make apps but a way to more uh, I guess profit to monetize off of this new user base by charging you know two three four five bucks whatever the price of a Tesla app might happen to be uh, being able to charge for those apps not only lets uh, you get your app out to a new uh, subset of people but also make some money in the process 
And then Tesla as well, not only is Tesla kind of freeing up their engineers to work on different things and being able to take a little bit of the workload off of uh, some of those engineers tasked with these apps, uh, maybe moving them to higher priority things like autopilot and full self-driving and battery technology and stuff like that, but they also can make some money. Think of the Apple model. Apple's making 30% uh, of each sale in the app store just because they own the platform. Tesla could do something similar. They're not writing the apps, but they're uh, providing basically access to the user base and access to the APIs and the infrastructure. They could make a cut of each sale. So it's a win for everybody, a win for the driver, a win for developers, and a win for Tesla. Everybody's getting something out of this deal that could make it uh, very profitable and very worthwhile for everybody involved. And again, there'd be a lot for developers to play with and have access to. You not only have uh, entertainment apps and games, but you have real driving features that could enhance the uh, possibility of things you could do with your car. Not only switching out maps and entertainment options and music, but like real like useful things that I can't think of for this video, but I'm sure the developers could, uh, that could really enhance the real driving experience and usability of the Tesla car, making the app more powerful, uh, making uh, just the car a better experience all around. There is so much possibility here uh, that could be uh, opened up if Tesla was to uh, create this app store and open it up to developers to really take advantage of. And it is kind of cool to see right now people are taking advantage of what's offered to them the best way possible. So I kind of mentioned before the Tesla theater, I've, I've uh, mentioned this in other videos and kind of demoed it uh, as well. Uh, someone has basically created a better Tesla theater that is totally web-based but works impeccably well in the car. Uh, you have access to Disney+, Plus, Plex, YouTube TV. You basically have access to everything you'd want right from uh, the Tesla, uh, basically the browser in the car, and you basically can watch whatever you want from any of these services uh, in a simulated experience that looks just like you're watching it through the basic Tesla uh, uh, theater mode, which is really cool to see. I've also showed off the different apps like Maps. Uh, someone has made a web-based Waze uh, application. People have made web-based Spotify applications. I mean, people are trying to take advantage of the browser, which is an awesome part of the vehicle to unlock more features. Obviously, it's limited. There's only so much you can do in a browser. You don't really have access to a lot of the low-level stuff in the car and APIs, but it is cool to see people's ingenuity and uh, people trying to do their best to take advantage of what is offered to them uh, as well. That is super cool to see. It reminds me of like uh, the OG iPhone and people making these web applications before the app store was even a thing. Uh, just people uh, making the most of what is offered to them and to see the creativity uh, and just the sheer coolness of things people are coming up with is just super awesome to see. But then of course, I have to play devil's advocate and talk about the other side. And there are a lot of uh, reasons that it just makes sense for Tesla not to do this. The biggest being just an inherent security risk. Uh, obviously there's a difference between an app crashing on your smartphone and an app crashing in your car. Uh, I'm sure that many have been uh, able to experience like I have when uh, the center console screen in the Model 3 just happens to crash and reboots and you're driving. Uh, it's a little bit like kind of driving blind. You have no special you have uh, no access to uh, the status of your car, uh, turned signals, anything like that. You're just kind of driving and the car parts still work, but not having access to that screen can be a little weird. If a third party app was to crash, that means one thing, but to crash the whole system and uh, the vulnerability of it crashing the whole car system is just a huge security risk. And Tesla has already been scrutinized for their autopilot system and some of the other features in the car. This could bring a lot of not only want unwanted attention, to the company, but unwanted danger and a lot of risk that, uh, you know, if this application was to crash or something was to go wrong for whatever reason, some kind of weird bug, it could put people's lives in danger and cause a lot of uh, horrible harm that I don't think Tesla or developers uh, necessarily want to run that risk. So they're, of course, kind of uh, the biggest thing why, uh, biggest reason why Tesla probably doesn't do this is just the uh, enormous and inherent security risk that third party apps uh, could cause to the system. Obviously, there need to be safeguards, there need to be APIs, there need to be kind of sandboxing, uh, you know, instances that can go on here, and a lot of things that can do, or a lot of uh, ways, rather, Tesla could prevent this, but it still is a risk no matter what precautions you happen to take. 
Also, just as it would free up work for Tesla engineers not to have to worry about, you know, creating these features that developers could, uh, there is uh, an inherent uh, now tax and time in terms of maintaining an app store. There are APIs to keep updated, there are security measures to keep updated, there are servers to create. I mean, creating an app store uh, in and of itself is a full-time job and maintaining it is also a full-time job. Ask anybody at uh, Apple or Google, uh, there's a lot that goes into this. So obviously that would uh, create a whole new subset of problems, new subset of costs, and uh, other things that go into just making this app store even a thing is going to create a lot of work for a lot of people. And then besides all those risks, there's also kind of the the dreaded horror of a BlackBerry or Microsoft scenario happening here as well. And to kind of summarize that uh, in short, uh, BlackBerry and Microsoft, both a little late to the smartphone game, uh, once they finally kind of got their footing and created app stores, uh, no one really bought the phones uh, because the apps weren't there and developers didn't want to access or, or put the resources into developing apps for those phones because no one was there. Like it was just, a, it was a catch 22. It was a horrible situation and all this time, money, energy, resources went into making app stores that developers didn't want to uh, develop for. Uh, I don't think that would necessarily happen here. I think Tesla is different than a smartphone. There's a lot of new things uh, you could do with that app store and the apps that would go in the app store. Uh, there's a whole new subset of people that could be reached. I mean, it's not like someone's going to buy yet another app for their smartphone. There's a, a whole new world for apps for your car. Uh, so I don't necessarily think that would be an issue, but there is a fear that Tesla could pour time, money, energy, into this and then it just not turn out to be worth their while. They could not make their money back and it just kind of could be a flop. Something to consider, a reason again to play devil's advocate, but I don't necessarily think that would happen because this is kind of a whole different ballpark than a smartphone or a computer. This is an app store for your car, something we've never really seen before. So we don't really have any kind of timeline on when this could happen. Tesla and Elon Musk have both alluded that this is going to be a thing and it's going to happen and it's definitely been discussed, uh, but we still don't know uh, if or when this could actually ever happen. Uh, so I guess the question for you guys is, what do you think about this Tesla app store? And uh, not only that, but what apps would you love to see in this app store? Uh, do you wanna see different entertainment offerings? Do you wanna see different music uh, providers like uh, Apple Music or Tidal? Uh, or would you wanna see something that could enhance the driving experience of the car itself. I'd love to know. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below. We can talk about it and discuss. And uh, I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts on the Tesla App Store uh, are and what this amazing thing could become if it ever does become official one day. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I am Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you in the next one.